Welcome to Your Business, Your Life with Matt DeFrancesco, your personal financial technician. Whether you've had years of success in your business or just starting out, Highlift Financial can help you create a vision for your business, life, and family, and align these for generational wealth. As they say, what happens in your life affects your business. And now, on to the show. Well, hello and welcome to Your Business, Your Life with me, Matt DeFrancesco. And, uh, you know, as we've kind of been working through a lot of the uh, episodes in between the ones I've had guests, we've been talking a lot about my practice and this idea of helping business owner to structure a transition plan and to also address a lot of the concerns. And that's one of the biggest challenges that I run into with my clients is not just looking at what that transition plan is going to be, but the threats that are posed both personally and uh, from a business standpoint. You know, a lot of business Business owners don't want to talk about what's going to happen if they would, you know, if they would die or become permanently disabled. But there's also outside threats that are out there to them. And a lot of them can very easily be addressed. So that's why I brought on my guest today. It's Alex Wittet. I got that correct, right? The last yep. name. Okay. It's Alex Wittet. He's the assistant VP of sales with Intrepid Direct Insurance. And they're a direct provider of business insurance. And they utilize, they combine both their expertise and technology to help create a greater client experience. And I'm going to have Alex maybe explain a little bit more about what they do. But so Alex began his insurance career in uh, 2011, and he uh, provides professional solutions for both personal and commercial lines and utilizes both captive and brokerage agencies. So he grew up around family businesses, so he knows them. And uh, he entered the commercial insurance industry because he wanted to work with business owners, kind of like me. So I think that's really great. He's a Kansas City sports fan. So I think you're looking forward to the Chiefs season this year, right? Definitely. Yep. And that's, uh, that's awesome. And uh, likes to spend time at the lake and on the slope. So anyway, uh, I'm really excited to have Alex on. So Alex, welcome to your business, your life. Yeah, thanks for having me, Matt. Oh, no problem. No problem. So yeah, Alex and I met at the uh, Southeastern Collision Conference back uh, uh, latter part of uh, latter part of June. And um, I was really excited because of not only the way they did business, but the how they try to educate their clients on the risks that are, that they have and how to address those things. So, but before we get started, Alex, just can you give us, I gave you a brief bio, tell us a little bit more about yourself and especially about Intrepid Direct. Sure. Yeah. Like you said, I've been in insurance for a little over 10 years now, primarily on the uh, commercial property and casualty side. So work with business owners for quite a long time, uh, several different spaces and construction companies and some things like that. And then made the transition over to uh, Intrepid Direct about three and a half years ago, which really brought in to help kind of create and grow their garage program. So What Intrepid Direct does, as you said, we're a direct provider of commercial insurance. So we don't work through any agents or brokers. We work directly with the insured. So that does several things for people. You know, it uh, speeds up a lot of processes. It streamlines things like claims handling, uh, certificates gathering, any kind of touch that you have with your insurance company. Instead of working through a middleman, you're contacting the insurance company directly. We aim to provide a higher level of service than you can get outside of it. A big piece of that also is we're not paying any kind of commissions to agents or brokers. So we're ideally saving business owners, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20% on their business insurance because we're not paying those commissions. Right. Really what we do is we find niche areas to focus on. So like I said, I came over here about three and a half years ago to work on this garage program. So we really got involved with collision shops, kind of started out with iCar, became a sustaining partner with them. And went after ICAR Gold Collision Shops because we know that they are getting the training to do repairs the right way. So we wanted to build a kind of an insurance pool of higher quality OE certified or ICAR Gold certified collision shops. So uh, we started there, started working with a lot of state associations. And that's how we got out to the uh, Southeast Collision Conference, working with CCA there. But we work with SCRS and several other state associations as well. Yeah, no, I and I think I like the fact that you deal with the iCar Gold shops because you know it's funny. Even in my business, you know, you want to try to help everybody, but you know, really, when you look at it from a business standpoint, you have to really find, like in my business, find the clients that are coachable and teachable. And I think, at least from my understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that when you have an iCar Gold shop, they've taken the time to uh, learn how to do things right. So they're probably much easier to work with. I would think. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, it, you know, it provides a level of control for us. So we know that if you're going through the effort to do the training, spend the money on the education for your employees, you're probably also have a little bit better equipment, a little bit better building, you're upkeeping things nicer, you're doing all these things from a purely insurance perspective is advantageous to us because we want people doing things the right way, not just the closure repair, but the overall business practices. So you see less workers' comp claims, less property claims, all this type of stuff for people who are the type of business owner who wants to invest in bettering themselves, their business, and their employees. Right. And you know, it's all about, again, every business owner should want to create value within their business. And I think you know that's, that's how you do that is becoming the best of the best. But there's always those outside threats that are there. And you know, like I, I mentioned in my intro, you know, as I work with clients, helping them to create a transition, to create this family wealth, you know, this is usually a lot of times one of the first steps we look and we say, okay, well, what would happen if something happened to you, whether, you know, you couldn't work anymore. And, you know, it's amazing as I go through this, all of a sudden these business owners realize the threat that they're exposed to. And, and like I work on a personal level, but we also have to look on a business level because they could be building value and all of a sudden have this, you know, th it's their number one investable asset. And all of a sudden something happens, you know, whether it's from property casualty, you know, personal liability. So I wanted you to basically tell the audience, how do you help these business owners, make them aware of these threats that they could face, because that's the big challenge I have a lot of times. Is, and again, I deal with, you know, death and, you know, permanent disabilities. That's, you know, which nobody wants to talk about, but even, you know, some of the threats that you deal with, do they have a hard time? Like the, are they things that they want to talk about and how do you address that to get them moving in the right direction? Yeah, first and foremost, I mean, I think it's just looking at their insurance policy and talking to them about what their business does and seeing if there's any gaps in there. Mm -hmm. A lot of times what we find has happened is insurance policies are carried over year after year after year, never really reviewed. And what's happening in the real world is risks are changing, new things are coming up, inflation happens, stuff like that. So if you think about your insurance policy being kind of balanced when it starts, if you don't rebalance it as time goes along, it kind of gets out of whack, whether that be a new threat or just adjustment within the marketplace. Right. Yeah. Well, and again, you know, one thing I could see is, you know, you know, as we're working to build value in a business and we're seeing a business go up, you know, are companies actually looking at their policy and saying, hmm, I need to increase my coverage now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Property insurance is a primary example of that right now. So with the way inflation is going, everybody hears about inflation on the news. Uh, it's impacting all types of businesses. So as you had already touched on, the in the collision space, their biggest investable asset is their building typically. So right. if you're looking at a building value from five years ago to today, it's drastically different. Even within the last year, property values have gone up roughly around 20% nationwide. So if you're not carefully evaluating your property coverage and how much your building's worth, you could really get yourself in a bind if something was to happen, there's any kind of total loss or even a partial loss of your building. Right. I can definitely see that. So, so what, what do you see as the biggest threats that shop owners face? And I know we talked about three of them specifically, and they, they were kind of eye opening to me. I mean, I think the property one, which you've uh, addressed right now is, is a big one, but some of the other ones I thought were really, uh, really interesting. So what are those threats that you really see? Yeah, I would say probably the biggest threats right now are just coverages being missed. So that's uh, you know, having your building properly insured, like we're talking about the property insurance, Cyber liability is a huge topic right now, and shops are not protected from cyber liability a lot of times. And then another one is social inflation, just carrying a lot of enough liability to protect your shop in case something happens. And if there's a lawsuit to arise from some kind of work or something that you did. And then probably the last one that we hadn't talked about beforehand was employment practices liability. So oh. that's, that's going to protect you against uh, any kind of like sexual harassment, wrongful termination, those types of lawsuits that are really on the rise today. Right. Can we talk a little more detail about each of these areas? Like I'm really, you know, I'm wondering, like you talked about this uh, cyber liability, do shop owners really understand like where those threats could be and what data could be the data that they carry could be stolen and harmful to them and their customers? Yeah, I don't think most understand it. I think it's becoming more and more front of mind. There's certain things that are forcing it there. So there's companies such as Rivion that are requiring a million dollars of cyber liability in order to be a direct repair with them. So there are companies forcing it to kind of the front and 
I think that's, that's making shops more aware of it. But as you mentioned, the data they carry, that's probably their biggest exposure is having some kind of third parties data. So whether that's Rivian or whether that's when your customers, computers hold so much data on them now as there's computers inside of vehicles. So if you think about someone who brings their shop into your vehicle, what's all stored on that computer within that or that CPU within the vehicle. So you can have contact information, you can have home addresses, you can have all these things that can arise and could be accessed by uh, some kind of malicious intent by somebody. Right. Do you think that's something that shop owners could use as a marketing tool too? having the proper coverage and being able to go out there and use that as a marketing tool for themselves? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I said, there's first and foremost, there's going to be uh, DRPs and insurance companies requiring it. So they're not even allow you to work on their vehicles without it. But also I think anytime you're advertising or allowing people to know that you're taking these proper precautions and your business is ran the right way definitely helps. Right. So, okay. That, I mean, and I, like I said, I think, you know, any shop owners that are listening to this, you know, we're trying to provide value out there to help you to understand what the threats are so that, you know, as you build this business, you can have a uh, much greater value in it. So social inflation was something you talked about. And that was something it was, it was, it was interesting. I've never really heard the term before. So I want you to explain that a little better to those shop owners who may not be uh, familiar with what that means. Right. So social inflation is generally an insurance term. And what it does is it's talking about how lawsuits today, generally speaking, they settle for or if a jury awards a settlement, it's a lot larger than it was in years past. So if you just a random example, if you think like a bodily injury claim, the average bodily injury claim that a jury awarded five years ago was around $300,000. Today, it's more along the lines of $900,000 on average. So it's increased quite a bit. So really how that impacts a shop owner is just the amount of liability you're covering. Everybody's familiar with the John Eagle case and how much that settled for. So juries today are a lot more likely to award a large amount versus what they were. So you really need to be considering how much liability or coverage you have on your policy. And that really kind of ties into your umbrella coverage. So most shop owners I see today, almost all of them are carrying an umbrella policy, which is great. If you're not carrying an umbrella policy, you really need to have one. But a million dollar umbrella policy today does not go nearly as far as it did five years ago. So I would seriously consider looking at two or three million dollars umbrella policy to get your shop up to a more adequate level of liability. Right. Oh, that's no, that makes complete sense. And and umbrella coverage is not expensive, correct? Correct. Yeah. So in really any kind of uh, coverage we're talking about, they're not generally that expensive to expand these things and to provide the better level of coverage. So if you're paying, you know, twelve or fifteen thousand dollars a year for your full package of shop insurance to increase your umbrella, to get cyber liability, to get different types of property insurance or just raise your values, it's only going to be a couple extra thousand dollars to increase those things. Mm-hmm. You're paying the bulk of the premium, the, the policy set up and have it in place. And they provide those underlying coverages that are really important to go that extra step and make sure you're not really running a risk with something in your business. It's only going to cost a couple of a couple thousand extra dollars. So it's well worth the investment not to run the risk on your own or just to give you the uh, peace of mind at night that like, hey, if something happens, I'm properly covered. My business is going to carry on. My legacy is going to carry on. And I'm not that exposed. Right. Yeah. And I think the key word I think that you said was investment. And I think too many times we forget about that many times we're we're looking at the dollars, just the cost, instead of saying, this is an investment in my future that not only will protect me, but also provide much more value to me, you know, as things move forward. So Alex, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to throw you a little bit of a curveball. I wondered if you had any success story that you could tell us about a shop owner that you worked with. Maybe, you know, you went in, found, you know, the, is a a lot of threats, how you got them to see what those threats were and to be able to adequately protect themselves. Yeah, absolutely. I think of first class collision, they're out of Washington. They're a large MSO shop up there. Uh, We got introduced to them kind of through certified collision group, if you're familiar with them. Hmm. So Marty's the owner of that shop and we were speaking with Marty and kind of evaluating his policies. I think he realized he hadn't really looked through them for a long time, but we took his his policies, looked at what he was doing, and then kind of quoted up the way we thought it should be, put it together on like an Excel spreadsheet and kind of compare what you have now versus what we are saying you should have. 
I mean, we increased property limits. We expanded liability coverages. We probably included employee practice liability and cyber liability in there that he wasn't covering before. Right. And overall, the bottom line difference, you know, is maybe on our policy it was maybe 15% versus what his current coverages were. Yeah. But because we were able to, because of our direct model and how we offer safety to start off with, it was basically a wash. So we provided the coverage for no more expense than he was already paying, but brought in that coverage and really kind of closed all those gaps and made sure he was, you know, wasn't exposed to anything that he shouldn't be exposed to. Right. No, I think, and, and that's great. I think you provide that visual example, like you did through the spreadsheets. I think that makes it clear for that shop owner to see, oh, wow, I didn't, you know, I didn't realize it because too many times they're kind of bouncing these numbers around the head instead of seeing a picture of what it looks like. So I think that's a really good thing. Yeah. Insurance policies aren't easy to understand. I look at them all day, every day. So I'm used to combing through them. But even when I look at one I haven't seen for a while or a different carrier, I have to sit there and comb through it, try to figure out, okay, how does this person cover this? So to someone who's not looking at insurance all the time, it's confusing and it's tedious trying to comb through the policy, figure out what's covered. So yeah, if we put it on an Excel sheet, kind of line by line, hey, here's how this is being covered here. This is being covered here. This is how much this is. This is how much this is. There's simple things on there that you know, people miss, think of employee tools, for example. So our policy that's designed to cover collision shops is going to come with a really high limit on employee tools. And we can increase that amount. If you think about how many tools all your techs have in your building, how much, how many tools does your A-tech have, you know, how much is this toolbox worth? Just the box itself. Now, I promise you, if you go, if people listening, go look at their insurance policies. If you haven't specifically increased this amount, they're typically going to come with $1,000 in coverage per employee, a $10,000 max. So if that can't replace all the tools in your shop, which I know it can't, it That's can right. probably replace one person's tools. Talk about employee retention and how people are hard to find right now. Really good way to take off one of your technicians to tell them, hey, I'm sorry, the shop was broken into last night. They stole all the tools. You're going to need to go replace your $75,000 worth of tools that you have in our building, or you're footing the bill yourself. You know, you take your pick, but either way, it's not great. So it's small things like that. People don't look to see, yeah. hey, how much employee tool coverage do I have on this policy or how much uh, water backup coverage do I have? It's, it's things like that that we find on the policy that are typically missed, along with the coverages, the more specific coverages we're talking about as well. And when you build all those things in there, that's when you know you have the peace of mind. But that's what the Excel spreadsheet shows you that you're not going to just pick out on your own unless you're specifically looking for those things. Right. Yeah. It's, you know, it's interesting. I think a lot of times our job is really just to open our customers' eyes up to what they are exposed to. I mean, I always, my coach always would tell me, you know, as, as, as you're working with a new prospect and you're talking to them and, and in the financial service industry, you know, you always want to talk about wants and needs and goals and all the fluffy stuff, bucket list stuff. But he always tell me, he goes, what you want to get to is the wound. Okay. What is the threat that they have? And, and that's the thing that you need to hammer because people react to pain quicker than they react to pleasure. Right. And for so, sure. Yeah, exactly. And so it's actually interesting as I'm working on transition plans. One thing that I learned is that I needed to address the threats first and that naturally led into a transition plan, but a transition plan takes years to put together. And so, you know, especially if you're looking at bringing in the next generation or you're trying to build the business for a third party sale, you know, this is not something that happens overnight. And every business owner says, I got a five year exit plan. And guess what? It's a rolling five year because they never really set goals. And so it's important to understand that, yes, this is going to take time, but we also have to address the threats now that can face us. One thing I wanted to ask you, and this is kind of a sticking point that I run into, because one of the things I want business owners to do, and it's usually an initial step for them, is to do a business valuation and a property appraisal. And personally, I like them to do is every couple of years, we need to redo those because again, like you said, these things raise value. Would you recommend that practice to shop owners? Yeah, absolutely. And to to go along with that, the appraisal and the building evaluation is take a note or take a list of everything that is in your shop. So what we'll see is if there's a total loss, when you go to replace these things, all the stuff, all the equipment, all the tools, everything that's in your shop, you're inevitably going to forget what all all was in there. And so you're going to try to replace these things. And so what most people don't understand is let's say you have $300,000 of business personal property. So contents coverage on your policy the insurance company doesn't come in and just say, here's a check for $300,000, go go buy all your stuff. They say, 
hey, what was in the building and give us a list of all this stuff. And if you can only value things to $200,000, even though you have $300,000 of coverage, uh-huh. well, you get a check for $200,000. So right. the better way to make sure that you're not missing something or you don't get six months down the road and say, oh man, we haven't used that forever. And then you go to look for it and it's not there. Keep an inventory list of everything that's in your building. So yes, evaluate the building, evaluate your inventory, keep a list. Well, if nothing else, it'll save you a headache when you go to uh, turn it into an insurance claim or when you're doing some kind of evaluation on the business and you're like, hey, I need to know what all my inventory is in here and what the building's worth itself. Yeah, I think that's, and that's really important. And, and you know, to speaking to, you know, the clients that I work with, you know, one of the, like I said, that first step is that business continuity plan. And part of that is a list of instructions. And I think you need to have these instructions somewhere and let somebody know in the business continuity plan where they are, because if something happens to you, they're going to need to know where the policies are, what the coverage is, what's being covered and having those list of inventories. I think, I think these things tie together perfectly. So in the last time you where you don't want to try to be putting these things together is some time of crisis. Right. Uh, so whether that's like a storm event or a fire or a loss of life or an injury or something like that, I can promise you that's not when you want to try to put all this together because at a time of crisis, you're, you got all these other things going on. You'd rather have all these things in order before that happens. Amen. If that hopefully it doesn't. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. You know, we have to expect the worst, pray for the best. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. So, but I think it's really important to have all those areas covered. So that's, that's yeah, absolutely. I think particularly with what you're doing with wealth strategies and kind of um, legacy strategies and things like that, the last thing you also want to do from like an insurance perspective is just not protect yourself. You you put all this work into it. It's not going to cost you that much more. It's not going to be that much harder to protect it the right way. So don't jeopardize all of that with something small, like missing a piece of insurance coverage. That's you're exactly right. And I think, you know, especially protecting that business too, because in many cases, even if something happens to the owner, all right, and maybe they don't have a full continuity plan in place, that business has to keep running to help provide for their families. And so, you know, again, if if you don't have this proper coverage and all of a sudden everything collapses, now not only are you at risk, but your family's at risk. Yep. Yeah. And your employees as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so Alex, you have any other points that you wanted to bring to the table here? Uh, we're getting close on time, but I wanted to give you a chance to, if you have anything else and then let people know how they can find you. Yeah, sure. Really. I think I just say different policies have different features in them. Depending on when you last evaluated, there could be different gaps. So I think that honestly, the best thing to do is just sit down with someone, whether it's myself or your agent that you currently use, someone who's versed in not only in insurance coverage, but what collision shops need. So they can look for those things. We're happy to do that in Trevor Direct. We have a team here that only works on garage policy. So we're very good at finding any kind of gaps or explaining how a policy works or how it covers you. But I think that just the main thing is to sit down and evaluate it with someone. Worst case scenario, you find out you're properly covered and you sleep better at night for it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think it's really important too, to have somebody who that knows that business, because there's going to be probably a little nuances that maybe your just general PNC agent isn't going to know. The fact that you guys know the garage and collision business, there's probably maybe little things that you're going to pick out, you know, a generalist won't find. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, nothing against any kind of generalist, but uh, no, no, we no. ensure well over a thousand shops nationwide. We're dealing with collision shops every day. We look at a ton of these policies. I can tell you what one carrier does versus another carrier versus another carrier since we look at them so often. So yeah, someone who specializes in it is definitely going to be able to pick out those little things and find gaps with anything that you're looking at. Exactly. So, so that's great. So Alex, I want to thank you for being on uh, your business, your life. Personally, I think this is one of the most important topics that shop owners and any business owner really needs to address because I think too many times, you know, insurance has got a bad name, right? Everybody looks at them as these evil guys and maybe they brought it on themselves to a certain extent, but it's a, I guess for lack of a better term, it's a necessary evil. And we need to make sure that we are protected because You know, I always say, you know, life throws you wrenches and you don't know what's going to happen out there. And, you know, you prepare for all the, you know, the things that you can control, but you can't, you you can prepare as best you can for the things that you can. And I think, you know, what Alex and Intrepid Direct provide will help to 
make sure that you're covered when those events happen. So, you know, Alex, you know, well, I'm going to tell, first off, I'm going to tell the audience, I would strongly recommend reach out to Alex, even if it's just for an evaluation of your current insurance. I think that's probably the most important thing that you could do. And I'm sure, you know, if Alex says, Hey, you're properly covered, you got everything. Your guy did a great job. That's going to be the way it is, right? Absolutely. Yeah. No hard feelings. If someone wants to take a look and have us evaluate it, we're happy to do that. If you decide that you want to stay with your guy where it's properly covered, yeah, no hard feelings on our end. So that's awesome. That's awesome. So Alex, thank you very much for being on Your Business, Your Life. And the last thanks always goes to you, the audience. Thank you for listening to Your Business, Your Life with me, Matt Francesco. And if you've not subscribed to the podcast, please click the subscribe button below. That way, anytime a new episode comes down, it'll download directly to your advice. You get to hear great guests like Alex and uh, all the other ones that we've had on. Also, uh, if you could give us a five-star review, that would be great. That helps us to move us up on the uh, podcasting ranks and uh, we can get to more people with the great content that I'm trying to uh, provide here too. So, and also uh, if you're checking us on YouTube, please give us a positive review. So uh, with that, uh, I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Thanks again for listening to Your Business, Your Life and take care and God bless. Have a great day. Hey, I really want to thank you for listening to the Your Business, Your Life podcast. If you want to be notified when new episodes become available, click the subscribe button below. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of High Lift Financial. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investment, legal, or tax advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified professional with any questions you may have regarding your business or personal planning. DeFrancesco Financial Concierge, LLC, DBA, High Lift Financial, is a registered investment advisor. Registration with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission or any state security authority does not imply a certain level of skill or training.